Hello, and welcome to the GenPen tutorial. I am Dr. Abstract, creator of GenPen, and GenPen can be found on the Zim site at zimjs.com under examples, along with many more exciting things. There it is. I'd like to take you through how to draw things and uh, the menus and so forth. The menus scroll in like that and you can swipe them with your finger on a tablet for instance. See the tips? We'll go over some of these tips and you can view these at any time if you want. So all these panels uh, move like so, the menus. And we can draw here. Let's draw right on the screen. Woo! There, that's a kite tail, it's called. And we can do another. Whoop! Great. Now that might look centered like that, but because the layers menu is over here, uh, as a matter of fact, we can tell when we go full, it's not quite centered. There's all this space, so we have to watch that. But we can move over things one at a time, or indeed, we can use the drag here to drag the whole layer all at once. So we'll move those over a bit. Super. Now if we say let's add a city, okay? Uh, if we want to add a city, if I go to draw, oh it doesn't draw, that's too bad. It's because we're in a, a drag is turned on. So we need to turn that off and then we can draw a city. Oh a city, cool. If I wanted the city to go behind the kite tail, then I can use the down arrow here on the layer organizer. That allows us to do all sorts of things with the layer, and indeed, there she be. What if I wanted to put some grass on here on the city? So we could go to grass, like so. And even if we go to a new layer like this, as soon as I start to try and draw, it dragged my city. I I can't seem to draw on top of it. That would be really annoying. So what we can do is go to the city layer and use the little arrow here to go to the locks. And we can lock the city layer. Then when we go up to our, our grass layer here, yay, we can draw grass on the city. Cool, huh? Now just beware that you, you can still draw on a locked layer, there I drew, but if I try to pick that up and move it, I can't, so it redraws anyway, that's getting a bit advanced. I'm going to now undo. We can undo with a control Z, or we can undo with an undo, or we can redo. Note that the undo works for movement as well as, as just drawing. So there we go, we've seen some things with the layers. Let's unlock that. Oh, uh, if we want, say, to move this whole thing over, how would we do that? Well, here's hide, by the way, so we could hide all layers, whoop, or hide only this layer, whoop. For dragging, we go to the drag, so now we have the arrow on the drag, and we choose drag all. Now we can pick this up and drag all of them <clears throat> at once. Cool. And we can turn the drags off by saying all. If we were only dragging a few, like these two, we didn't drag the grass, then hitting the all will turn those off. Great. So we've seen some undo, some redo. The delete here is if we press on something. So I press on that and hit delete. Uh, let's undo that. Note there's no indication that it's been pressed on something maybe we could work on in the future. If I press on the grass and hit delete, there she goes, and undo that. <clears throat> clear will clear a whole layer, so whatever layer you're on, it will clear it. So there we are in the kite string. Clear, or kite tail. And how about, um, what have we got here? Uh, we've got redo, undo, we can change a color. Let's go to a dark color in the background. Like so. And a path. What does a path do? Now here's the path. Oh, mind you, the sticks can't be seen on the dark quite as easily. <laughs> uh, this is a path, and we can animate pens along a path. So uh, you can pick up the path by using the Bezier curves here. 
And there's all sorts of uh, path things, tips that you can see as well. For instance, we could uh, delete that by holding the shift and tapping it, or indeed you could select it and then choose delete here and that deletes it as well. We can add ones to it. So there I, I, you just press on the line and that adds new Bezier points. You can hold down the control and select multiple ones and move two of them at a time. So it's, it's quite versatile, but there's our path. <clears throat> Let's animate a, what should we animate along the path? How about some, some hair? <laughs> this is, you ready for the default hair setting? So we've got the path. Once we press path, it turns to follow. And follow says, there it goes. There's hair that is following the path. Now that hair went pretty quick. And by going so quickly, it spreads out the hair. So if we wanted to slow that down, we can go to time here and choose a, a longer time. So let's choose six, like so. And we can clear this, clear, and then try that again. Are you ready? Follow. Now our hair follows the path more slowly. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that crazy looking hair? <laughs> and you can make a bunch of them. Um, so that's sort of neat. The one neat thing about the path is you've got this special path and you can make a bunch of things uh, follow that. So that's very good for drop shadows or, or you can stack up these, these lines. Um, right now we're using the default uh, presets on here, but let's take a look and see how we can change those. Have we seen all the things up here? Tips, yep. Save, we'll save it out to a Photoshop or to a, your desktop, etc. Port is a way we'll, uh, that you can uh, pass presets back and forth to different computers. All right, so we've seen our menus. Uh, by the way, those menus can go away by pressing on the corners like this. I don't know if I showed you that. Or you can make them all go away with the full mode, but I did show you that. And now we're going to bring up the pens menu, which we haven't seen yet. Are you ready? Dum, dum, dum. So this is where it all happens. The pen allows you to modify your pens. These are the different types of pens up top here, and they're called something, but they're very versatile, even though they're, they're called that. <clears throat> and then once you make a change to it, you're welcome to save it as a preset down here. So let's see how we can change. Right now we're looking at the kite tail. Let's make it fatter. So uh, now it will be between 10 and 43 in, in thickness, like that. We'll slow it down and maybe we can see that a bit better. Oh yes. And by the way, this is magnified, zoomed in on these. So if we unmagnify it, it's still between 10 and 44, but you can see that we can bring it up to an even bigger size, like so. So when we go back here, clear that. Cool, huh? We can draw a pen like so. Bring the magnifying back in there. You can also sync it. So now once we start dragging this, it syncs to a certain size. Let's bring it to two, for instance. And now we have a size of two, but we can animate that scale. We can animate the size. So we'll bring up the animate size. You know, isn't this neat? And now, we'll bring it up a little bit more. When we draw, Isn't that cool? It's so beautiful that we just had to make a tool. We were doing we were doing this type of code. Uh, we were doing this type of code um, manually and going. Oh my goodness! I look so great that uh, a tool had to be made, and that's what Gen Pen is. It's the tool that will allow you to play with these things. We can choose not to rewind, and then we get this which looks like cool little lasers. Pew, 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 pew. Or maybe if we have no easing, so let's try and ease linear. Pew, 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 there we go. So that's with an easing linear. This is an ease in out. So you see how it sort of starts off slow and then ends up slow and has a fast change in the middle. So the easing matters. Let's try and ease in. 
there's an ease in, and all of a sudden it starts looking like a tree or something. Let's clear that. See that? Whereas an ease out is the other way. It's like lampshades. <laughs> And the faster you go, the sort of the bigger the lines in between. So if you need a faster pen, we increase the speed on the pen here. And you can get sort of longer droopy uh, patterns like so, which are just so cool. Wouldn't you like that in your house? I'd like that in my house. Like it's sort of like product design. It's like, whoa, yes, I want that. All right, so that's easing and uh, so forth. Um, let's see what else is there to look at. There's changing the colors. Okay, why don't we look at a line? So here's the line and we can add a color. Okay, and there's the line. <laughs> cool, huh? Ooh, uh, that's a pretty fast one. So we'll slow that down a bit now. I'll take it here, increase our damping a touch and uh, clear that. And now it's slower, but smoother. Ooh. So you can animate that along a path if you want, kind of thing. Um, if we don't have the same size, here's what that looks like. Uh, let's not magnify. Hmm. Speed that up a touch. Maybe not so big. And we get this. Interesting. Uh, we could probably do a little bit better than that. Let's add a black. Okay. Oh, well, we've already got black because we're our background is black, <laughs> which makes it look like parts of it are missing. Um, de 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 so delete the black and add. Well, it doesn't matter. I don't think a red will look nice. <gasps> oh. Yeah, now you got to work on your color palettes. Oh, that was almost the same color. I don't like that as a... You know, stick with the purple motif, huh? There, okay. <laughs> Great. Maybe not this one. How about white? Uh, or something close to white. Gray. Okay. There we go. All right, so let's see. We've got that, and I want to uh, minimize the size at touch on that right because we were maxed out on that or magged out on that and then the speed is fast and slow down the damping a little or not damp and clear that yes so that looks cool as a robot or some sort of character or something like that but one thing is it's, it's just is it's very random so if we change that I've just clicked the arrow on the size and now what we're saying is give me this size, this size, this size, this size, this size in that order. And that looks like this. So yeah, still kind of random. <laughs> kind of can't draw quickly enough though there. Uh, along a path, if we made a straight path and then animated quickly, we'd get characters that almost like that look that don't have these sort of endings as we drop off there. Or if I just and you sort of throw it. Yeah, I like those better. It's maybe two, drawing two longs of lines. So there they are. Neat, huh? And you can also randomize these these uh, numbers themselves if if you so desire. And you get to do 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 sort of a random version of it. Delete. But isn't this neat? It's, and if we want to save this, we go plus, yeah, let's make a new one. So now we have line one here. It's a little bit far away from line. Uh, but if we use the arrow, so line one, use the arrow to move that along. And now it's next to. We could have moved it to the beginning. And if we want to delete it, we can delete it, etc. So great, now we've got these little characters. How would we make arms for them, for instance? Well, let's bring that back to be the same size. So we'll sync those and make them well, magnify in because we don't want them that big. How's that? Oh, they're skinny arms like that. And should we add something else in here? Well, let's add one more color, a special color for the arms. Uh, 
Yeah, okay, fine. I don't usually have blue. I want the arms to go behind these characters, so I'm going to move this up a layer, like so. And I don't want to select that, so I'm going to lock it. And therefore, we go lock and hit lock on that layer. And then on the line underneath, I'm, I, I can just start drawing. Oh, that's too fast for me. So right away, I saw that the pen needed to be slower, have, have a bit more damping so it was smoother. And we come in. Oh, yes. Hilarious. So now we've got these uh, sort of magical, weird looking robots walking around. And we can draw a whole bunch of different ones that are all kind of the same. So it's an illustrator's dream, really. Have we seen most of the things? Uh, we can change this thing called scale. So uh, it's, it's similar to animate, except it's this one's top to bottom. So now we'll increase the size of it, the scale of it going from the bottom. And we better reduce this. So we'll reduce with a smaller number to start. It doesn't make anything doing it horizontally, but uh, vertically it does. Now we can bring up the scale a touch more. Okay, let's try this. I'll clear that. Bye-bye robots. Goodbye robots. So this gives us a perspective <clears throat> when we draw. Oops, I think I'm on a lock layer. Yeah, see I couldn't, I tried to pick that up and moved it, move it, but we're on a lock layer. Um, and let's clear that, a uh, perspective, um, but also you can mirror that. So now what it looks like is it goes bigger and then as it approaches, it gets smaller. So that's mirrored. And you can move over to a uh, left to right version of it, uh, mirrored as well if you if you want, and you can move um, to a centered version. So this is bigger in the center and smaller on the sides. Oh, oh we didn't make any changes there. No. So uh, let's show you something here, just out of interest. Uh, we'll clear that, and that is so small at the sides, bigger as you get in the center. One of the things that needs to happen is it needs to be fast in the center and slow down as it gets far away. Fast in the center and slow down as it gets far away. There, what do you think? Cool, I like it. All right, so um, what was I going to show you? Oh, yes, the, um, the a thing that you can do is reverse it. So this is a max of 39 or whatever, and now we'll bring that down to a minimum of one, and we'll max out, uh, or we'll, we'll bring the min up, and then it reverses that. Uh, clear, full, where stuff is big, but small in the middle. I don't know if I made it small enough. Yeah. There, I think we can go right to zero. Oh, it seems all right. Big on the outsides, clear that. Big on the outside. Well, you get the idea. And smaller in the middle. And that actually looks pretty nice because then it's like, oh yeah, there's our middle, there's our very small. Oh, no, too big. Cool. Gen Pen. <laughs> so I should be saying. Oh, I didn't want to take too long on this. So um, we're probably long enough. You can see that there's all sorts of exciting things. Is there anything else that we need to uh, uh, check out? I think that's the majority of it. There is the saving. Uh, hopefully the savings worked out. Whereas if I now save this, I can either make a new one or replace the, the one that I happen to be on. Um, so I'll make a new one out of that. That's the line two. I think I showed you that sort of stuff and we can move the line two along 
here to be with the other line. Otherwise, that would have replaced line. So uh, this is the working data here. If I choose line one now, watch what happens. This is the working data. I may or may not have saved it. And that's the issue. So if I go to line one, it says, do you want to overwrite the temporary pen data? If I say yes, then it's going to take whatever was in line one and put it into our working data. If I say no, it doesn't do anything. So I say yes, and now we're back to pen one. I've lost the working data for, for line two, but I can, because I saved it, I can get to it again by hitting line two. And yes, I'll overwrite, and now it comes back. That allows you to edit. So we can edit by saying, oh, if you wanted to edit anything with line one, you hit line one, say yes, put it into the temporary, make a change to it. Oh, I want to add a yellow. Okay, there you've got it. And hit the plus and say, how do you want to save this pen? Replace, replace. Now line one has these guys and line two has the, well, is how it was before. And then once you close down and come out here, I could go to line one and start drawing with line one, or I can go to line two and start drawing with line two. That's how all that works. Oh, that looks pretty dreadful. But I think you can make some excellent things with Gen Pen. And as mentioned, we didn't want to be too, too long on this. I am Dr. Abstract, this guy, also known as Dan Zen. And we are here on Zim, zimjs.com where you can come in and learn how to code, learn how to build this kind of stuff. There's a huge learn section. There's Pragma, Hi Pragma. Uh, there's a school section for, for sort of like uh, grown-ups, <laughs> I suppose, <laughs> uh, high school and beyond. And then there's a kids section as well. There's also a teach section. So if you're a teacher, you're welcome to come in or know a teacher. Um, there's all sorts of uh, lessons to build this stuff. Code zero, how, what code is right from the philosophical beginning. Kids site drawing, building things. Oh, look at this. This is all the basics of JavaScript and a whole bunch of YouTube videos and then all sorts of interactive um, tutorials called Zimbits they are. And here are mid-level ones with things that you can do at mid-level. And here is all the stuff for the advanced levels. There's some soup. Woohoo! And uh, etc. So all sorts of things to do with Zim at zimjs.com. This is Neo where we're animating in along a path and dragging things on paths and stuff like that. It's like, oh, so cool. Isn't that neat? You can edit this path and, well, as we've seen. So this is Zim. Woohoo! I am Dr. Abstract. Have a great day and share, share, tell people about uh, Gen Pen and so forth. Have some fun. Ciao.